Amen. Glad to be here today. I tell you, Kira, that was amazing. I love, I call it the it factory when you sense the presence of God falling on this place. Like that was that moment, like just sensing that the presence of God just using her. And that's, that's so good. I can't even look that way. So um, thank you, Kira. <laughs> um, Acts 2. I think I'm winding down. You say, thank Jesus. Uh, this is the last week uh, for me in, uh, of the Upside Down Church. And so today, we're talking about Upside Down Worship. Upside Down Worship. But before I read, actually, let me go ahead and read the text, this part, and then I'll dive in. So uh, the Bible says in Acts 2, 46 and 47, listen to what the Bible says. So continually daily in one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, um, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Here it is. Praising God. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So what does it look like for God's people to praise God? And let me just say up front, well, let me pray and then I'll, I'll jump in. Lord, I thank you for that baptism. I thank you for that precious, precious song on the keys. And Lord, as we've had this moment to know that you are with us, you are there. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. And I thank you, God, what you're going to say and what you're going to speak to our hearts about today in Jesus name. Amen and amen. I need to confess up front. We like to say this at our house. When you're wrong, you're wrong. <laughs> Here's the deal. I feel like I owe you an apology because we have used a word so loosely in the church that I feel like I've not given you proper interpretation of a word. And that word is worship. Let me illustrate what I mean by that. And this is not to Jace or not to anybody that leads worship. But here's what we've come to realize, I feel like, to some degree through the years. That we feel like worship is a hymn or a guitar or a piano. Or we think it's the first 20 to 30 minutes of a service. That is worship. Now there's some truth to that. But the problem is... Our life is worship. And so when we bottle up this idea that worship, let's stand for worship. Let's have a worship service. And again, I apologize because we use that term and, and I just pray and hope that you understand that a song is not necessarily just worship. You understand? You can sing a song and not be worshiping. Y'all all right? You can play an instrument and not be worshiping. Y'all all right? So the point is, I want you to understand that worship is a little bit different. And so upside down worship for sure, because we've associated it with, with certain times and certain ways. Well, man, that was a great worship experience. I love that kind of music. I can worship to that kind of music. That kind of music, I don't like that kind of music. I can't worship to that kind of music. And so what we've done, we've allowed ourselves and we've allowed honestly to pigeonhole ourselves to think worship is this one little way and here's what i would say today upside down worship i'm about to open lord willing your eyes hopefully what does the bible say about worship and what does the bible say and how we should worship and we've we i've just come to the conclusion that worship is not an event it's a lifestyle I, I've just come to that realization that worship will never be an event. You can go to church all day long, but that doesn't mean you worship. You can, you, listen, I've worshiped without ever singing one song. I've worshiped without ever necessarily opening the word of God. Now, I can't tell you, Dan, if I would have saw you this past week at 11 o'clock at night in your beater car with the windows down and your, and, and your head bobbing to Jesus music. No, we were not. Okay, well, maybe a little something like that. And worshiping God wherever you're at. 
whatever you're doing in worship. So what in the world is worship? Glad you asked. Here it is. This is a working definition because it doesn't mean this is the only thing that involves. So this is a working definition, and I just pray. I, I've told my wife, she worked so hard on a couple videos you're going to see, and, and we've been working through this, talking through this, and I just told her last night, I said, babe, I, I hope to God that some way, somehow, that people will not hear, like, I know what worship is, and dismiss it. I pray they would catch it in a different light this morning. So here it is, definition, you ready? Worship is our love expressed to God. As a response to his grace towards us. What, look, look, look with me. Our worship is our love expressed to God because God's, listen, God's grace toward us. I like to say it this way. If you break down the word worship, and here it is, this is what it means. Worth ship. That's what this word means. Worth ship. Ship. Now, if I were to say, what is worth? That of value, that of something valuable. Yes, you would know. But what does ship mean in the words? And so when you think about a ship, you think about a big boat, right? You think about, you know, the carnival cruise ship or whatever you're thinking about. And, and you think about a big boat. But yet, ship is a suffix that really means the state of being. The state of, let me give you an example. Discipleship. It's the state of being a disciple relationship what is that it is the state of being related to someone so here it is worship it's the state of value you place on something hold on question how much is god worth to you when you explain to others how much God is worth to you, how God is precious to you, the way God is precious to you, you place value on that. You understand there's some, so I just, I'm, I'm absolutely realized there's nothing more valuable than God. And you place that value because here's the thing. When you understand the value is for that person, talking about God, it's an express love towards God. Listen to me. Listen, this is it. Your lifestyle reflects that which you see and deem as valuable. So there's a video that I want you to watch, and I'll explain it to you in just a second. Check the, this is video. <laughs> A Donald Trump rally, notorious for drawing his most steadfast supporters. Traversing thousands of miles and braving severe weather, upending their normal lives, they road trip across the country to as many Trump events as possible. The former president himself recently taking notice. Look at the front row Joes, will you stand up? These people, they follow me all over the place. They're the greatest. It's not about the money, really. I mean, I'm not rich, but it's supporting Donald Trump, showing my loyalty to Donald Trump. A politician receiving intense and unshakable loyalty from their supporters. Their support is unwavering. He, it doesn't matter what she plays. I know it's going to be beautiful. Whatever she has planned for Houston, it's going to be great. Like, I think the community is going to be the best part about this weekend. It's so loving and welcoming and just genuine. I am just so excited to scream at the top of my lungs with people who love this music so much. And Cheering for a sports team creates camaraderie. There is comfort in knowing that we are all watching the same game and cheering for our team at the same time. Cheering for his team can inspire hope and optimism. They share ideas and opinions. They meet up with other people who like the same things that they do. And you find people who understand you. And they obsess over it and treat it like it's their life. His music is so inspirational. I just love him so yeah. much. Now, before you say Trump, stop hating on Taylor Swifties or whatever you say, um, 
I'm not a Taylor Swift fan, by the way. Um, that's just me. That's another story for another day. Don't check out. But, but notice the, the, the demonstration of people. Got to be honest. When I look outside and look at the crowd as we assemble, hear the language that they've said. I'll drive wherever, like I want to be loyal. And it's like the state of just value, like they're placing so much value on that individual. That person means so much to them. And they're in awe. You could see it in their eyes. As a matter of fact, you could see it in the game. They'll pay thousands of dollars just to, to be in the same stadium. To, hey, to, to cheer on. And there's nothing wrong with sports. Ain't nothing wrong with music. Ain't nothing wrong with Trump. Ain't nothing wrong with any of that. But here's the question. When's the last time you came to church and said, when I come in, I can't wait to sing at the top of my lungs with all these people? When's the last time you came to church and said, hey, it's worth it. I will invest anything for the kingdom of God. So worship has become an hour's time frame. And we went to church, we worshiped. No, you didn't. Hey, when you value something, when you place importance on something, your lifestyle reflects it. So much so that listen to how the Bible, or listen to what an, a, a, an author said. To worship something is to prize it, to adore it above everything else. To honor it as if it's the most important thing in your life. So question, worship, how much is God worth to you? If somebody in the community, if somebody in your family, when they hear you say something about King Jesus, they say that joker flat loves God. He adores God. He's always talking about God. He's always serving. He's always reading. He's always praying. There's something about him. They value God. And so for me, it's my whole life's been turned upside down to realize that, again, I just apologize because I don't want you to think that truly worship is just a 30-minute window. It's our deepest affection towards God. As a matter of fact, one would say it this way. Worship is something that demonstrates how valuable God is. So how valuable is God to you? Well, Jesus dealt with this with the religious leaders. And I want to kind of go through it real quick and to kind of talk to you a little bit. If you got it, I think it's in your notes there. But Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 and 9. Listen to what the New Living, how the New Living translation puts it. I love the way it reads. It says, these people, who are these people? These people are religious people. And so these were the religious Pharisees and Sadducees. And now you understand why they're sad, you see, right? Y'all remember that joke? You got that, okay? So these are the religious people. Listen to what he says. These religious people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Listen to what he says. The, their worship is a farce. Hold on, hold on. For they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. The word farce is a word that means empty or waste of time. Wait a second. Jesus is speaking. And he said, these religious people honor me with their lips, but their hearts far from me. Their worship is meaningless. Jesus, that ain't very nice of you. Jesus, that's not real nice. And so he says that you honor me with your lips, but your heart far from me. So it's this idea of worshiping God with your heart. Because if it doesn't come from your heart, it's not worship at all. Y'all with me? It's going to get better, so hold tight. You know, sometimes you got to realize how bad it is before you realize how good it is. Y'all, you, you understand? But let me give you another verse, just in case you're like, well, that's Jesus. And, and, but that's not how they worship in the Old Testament. Well, glad you talked about that. Old Testament, Isaiah 29, verse 13. Listen to what the Bible says here. And the Lord says, these people say they're mine. Hold on. These people, who are these people? They say they're my children. They say they're my people. They say they belong to me. They say they're Christians. I'll say it in the 21st century way. They say they're Christians. Listen to what Isaiah says. 
They honor me with your lips. Wait, it sounds familiar. Old Testament too. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts far from me. And their worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. Hold on. Do y'all know what rote means? It means mechanical repetition and routine. Wow. Hold on. So our worship, he says, don't be mechanical, routine, just going through the motions. Is how Pastor Bobby always says it. So, hey, Isaiah says it. Jesus says it. So what in the world? Have I got your attention yet? Okay, worship has got to be so much more than that. Worship is not through mechanical ways. Well, hold on, you got to lift your hands. That means I'm worshiping. No, that means I'm bowing down. No, that means, hey, I don't have time to talk about how you can worship. We'll get into that at another time, another day, and understand there's so many different ways. But let's talk about worship and why we need to turn our mindset upside down that it's not this, this window of time. Worship is our lifestyle. Worship is the way we behave. Worship is what we place our value. So if you place your value, show me your checkbook and I'll show you your value. Show me where you spend your time and I'll show you what you value. So value, where do you place your value? That's what you worship. And so Jesus is trying to say that my worship needs to come out of my overflow of my intimate relationship with Christ. So this is why we worship. So with that in mind, let's talk about why we worship. And I'm going to do it in 10, 13 minutes. You listening? I think that when we get caught up in this idea of worship, well, let me just read Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. You got your Bible there? Romans 12, 1 and 2. I'm going to read it in here, the New Living. Then I'm going to read it in the New King James, which is normally what I preach out of. But listen how the, the, the New Living says it. And so, dear brothers and sisters of Christ, talking about us, Jesus followers, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. This is what I'm saying. Your life, your whole being. Worship is not I raise my hand, I don't raise my hand. Worship is not I say words or don't say words. Worship is my life. Like my life is saying giving over to God. He says my worship, he says, is living and holy sacrifice. This he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Do not copy the behavior and customs of this world. Be upside down. That's what he's saying. Be upside down. He said, don't copy the behaviors of the custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Let me read it in the New King James and see if it sticks a little bit differently. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your what? Your life, your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Which, what, is your reasonable service, your act of worship. That's what he's saying there. And he says, and do not be conformed, right? Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. What is Paul saying? Our worship is the way we live our life. So question. What does your worship say. About God. As to the way you live. Your life. Not what takes place on. Certain times of the week. But it's who you are. And I tell people. All the time. I am. Who I am. If you see me on Sunday morning, or you see me on Wednesday afternoon, or you see me at 2 a.m., God help me. <laughs> Be quiet, sister-in-law. Just joking. I don't know that you've ever seen me at 2 a.m. I'm up at 2 a.m. I should be the same. My life is an anthem of worship to God. So I'm going to give you two statements and then hopefully 
I'll drive it home here. Here's, here's why we worship. We know what worship is. It's a love expressed to God. It's my life. I love you, God. You're more valuable than anything. That's worship to God. More than anything, God. That's what worship is. This is why we worship. Why we worship. We worship because it pleases God. Oh, this is one of my faves. Look what he says. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. For this is your act of worship. Hey, present your life. It pleases God the Father. And so I want to break this down. And hopefully, hopefully you get it. So worship is different than any other attributes that we give to God. Because the truth of the matter is, worship is the only gift we can give to God. Let me illustrate it. When we pray. See, a lot of times we think we're praying but praying is for us, not for God. So when we pray, it's not, listen, it's not for us, uh, uh, it's not for God. It's for us to present our prayers to God. Does that make sense? Let me give you another one. When we read our Bibles, reading our Bibles, hey, that ain't for God. He already knows what it says. It's not like he forgot what it said and he told him to read it or told him to write it. It's not like, now, now, now what's John 3, 7 say? I don't know. Tell me. No, no, no. We read because, listen, it's for us. When we give, it's not for God. Somebody says, I, I thought it was. He, he, heaven's got streets of gold. He owns it all. We're, listen, giving's for us to understand right relationship with God. But worship is for us to give to him. Because when we worship, why do you think the angels in heaven, they worship God? When God created us, he created us to worship him. So when we worship him, hey, that is fulfilling the purpose of God. I'm worshiping God. I'm begging and pleading with God. It pleases the Father. And there's no better way, and you know this, if you got kids at all, you can relate. This might be a terrible illustration, but daddies, you can relate in here. If there's anything that blesses your heart is when your kids value you, love you, and tell you how precious you are to them. Am I right, daddies? I can even say mamas too, right? Am I right? Hey, they can be mean and dirty and nasty and smelly and sinful. But when they get themselves cleaned up from their sin and from their stink. And they come to you. There's something about that love relationship in there. So much so. I want to play a video. This was a video of Riley giving me a call. When she was like four years old. Take a listen. Please leave a message after the tone. I love you, Daddy. I hope you have a good day because you're the best daddy in the whole world. And I just love you the most. And you're the best daddy I could ever have. I love you, Daddy. Why you think I still got it saved on my phone? Why you think I still got it saved on my phone? Daddy, I love you. You're the best dad in the world. When Jesus, when we can look at him and say, hey, daddy. I know when I worship, it pleases you. I'm sorry for not worshiping you. I'm sorry for not just not saying anything. Standing there stoic, not doing anything, not even going, not even giving my all. I didn't even hear what they said. God, I'm sorry. You're the best dad in the world. You're the best dad in the world. Hey. That's an earthly dad. How I feel. Can you imagine how my eternal dad feels? Whoo. 
It pleases God when you worship. When you add value and place value and worth, it pleases. Question. How is your daddy? How does your daddy feel about your worship to him? And I'm talking about King Jesus. See, worship is not a man-made rote, mechanic, rules. I do this, I do that, we do this, we do this. No, worship is my life. I give it to you, God. My yes is on the table. I am, ser- I am ready for service, King Jesus. I'm ready. It pleases Listen to how Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, without faith it's impossible to what? To please him. He says, for he who comes to God must believe that who he is and that he is a rewarder for those who what? Diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. It pleases God when we diligently seek him. Number two. Phew. I better go quick. Number two. We worship God. Not only because it pleases God. We worship God because it praises God. Psalm 150. Listen to this. Just listen to the language. And maybe you, if you're distracted, just kind of, you might can even close your eyes a second and just listen to this. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise God in, the, in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament, which is the heavens. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. I wanted to have trumpets right there and, burr, 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 and just like yell it out, you know. And then listen, he says, praise him with the lute and a harp. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Oh, Dance? I can praise God when I... You Baptist, you get it. Praise Him with string instruments. I don't know why we got instruments in church. Hey, he says praise Him with string instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. And praise Him with clashing cymbals. Here's what he says. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hey, look at me. Ready? Ready? Here's what I need you to do for me. Take a breath. You ready? Deep breath. Let every body that has breath praise the Lord. This is Jewish tradition. It's not in the Bible, but it states as Jewish tradition. That when a Jew inhales and exhales... He is saying the name Yahweh. When you read your Bible and it's capital Lord, it reference to Yahweh, Elohim. I am who I am. And so just by breathing, look, look, Jewish tradition says just by breathing, you're saying Yah, Yahweh, Yahweh. Just by breathing, Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Wow, what a what a what an unbelievable understanding that it's the angels in heaven. Do you know their assignment? They got the number one best-selling song and will stay number one into eternity. It's holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Hey, that no one's going to top that list. The angels in heaven is saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Let everything that has breath. See, that was an assignment. God made the angels. He ain't going to make you. He makes the angels. But he's not going to make you. It's a choice. And last time I checked, love is a choice. You love someone because you choose to love them. No one in this room would ever want anybody to love them based out of guilt or force or manipulation. 
everyone wants that spouse, that kid, that relationship, a choice. Hey, God made us to choose to worship him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And lastly, Psalm 130, or actually Psalm 34, and I'm not going to get through all of it, but I'm going to get through one verse and eight. All right, ready? I will bless the Lord some of the time. Dan, that don't say some of the time? You sure about that? I will bless the Lord when I don't know how to make ends meet. I will bless the Lord when my kids are wayward. I will bless the Lord when I just got fired from my job. I will bless the Lord when, when I lost a, a loved one, a spouse, a co-worker, a friend, a child. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hey, it's your life. Please don't miss this. Worship is not a service. It's your life. And then later on in verse number eight, he says this. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You know what I know about that? It hit me this week. It hit me this week. If you taste something, oh, this is good. If you taste something, you got to open your mouth. Some of you ain't tasted how good God is because you ain't opened your mouth to tell him. Good night. He says, taste and see what the Lord is good. Sometimes you just got to open your mouth and try it. <laughs> if you like my wife, she's like, here, try this. I said, I don't want it. She said, just try it. I don't want it. Try it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hey, worship, if you taste it, that it's not just a mechanical routine of a service, a song, a, a, an event, but it is your life. It's our love expressed to God as a response to his grace towards me. God, I don't deserve it. I'm going to praise you. God, thank you. I'm going to praise you. God, with everything inside of me, I'm going to praise you, praise you, praise you. What is he worth to you? Because he's worth my life. I will go and I will do anything for King Jesus. You hear me? If he tells me to go to China and plant a church in the most horrific area in the world, God is my witness, I'll go to China. If he tells me to cross the street to my neighbor, I will cross the street to my neighbor. Because my life is a anthem of worship. God, in response of what you've done for me, I can't repay you. I can't do enough. It, you are more precious than ever, than anything else. There's an old song. He's more precious than rubies. He's more precious than anything. May our worship be that echo. That God is more valuable than anything else we will ever experience. May our worship be our lifestyle and not an event. Amen. Do you understand it? I hope so. Because I sure spent a lot of time trying to get it. Father, we give you this service. Speak. I really do believe you spoke through the baptism. You spoke through the piano and the beautiful song that was sang. And Lord, I really believe you were speaking to hearts and lives as I was preaching. May our worship be an anthem. May our worship be our lifestyle and who we are. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Would you stand as we sing?